Texas. Some farmers say they have no choice but to kill some of the livestock because of the system's backlog. Some are euthanizing hundreds a week that were supposed to go into the system. The, the system, it's hard to really put the brakes on them and, and just store these animals. It just doesn't happen. We only have a matter of weeks before we have to make some decisions. Now, the federal government's launched a program to redistribute excess farm products, but many fear that this is too little too late, with thousands of pounds of food already destroyed. Farmers say they're struggling to survive and also struggling with ways to distribute their products. Oh, if you've been to the grocery store, you probably have seen it. Empty shelves where you normally find baking supplies. And as Nick Bower found out, a 130-year-old Milwaukee company is hustling to keep up with the baking bonanza. The COVID-19 stay-at-home orders are driving everyone indoors and driving some unprecedented demand. A baking bonanza, especially for homemade bread, has pushed sales of Milwaukee's Red Star yeast up 650% from the same time last year. And they're doing it for comfort and stress relief. And many are doing it for the first time. From their Milwaukee test kitchen, Red Star's Kelly Olson, who staffs the yeast maker's contact line, says they're getting five times the normal call volume as novice bakers seek expert advice. Could you ever imagine a day where you know, yeast sales jumped 600%? We couldn't have ever expected it. No one could predict it. The retailers didn't expect it, we didn't expect it. But it's, it, we just are honored to be part of the comfort that people are finding during this difficult time. Well, the baking section at the supermarket has been decimated by that uptick in baking, but nowhere more than the yeast aisle here. Red Star says they're working hard to catch up to the unprecedented demand. Our teams are working around the clock just as quickly as we can. There is no shortage of yeast. We have enough, we grow enough yeast to meet the demand. The challenge is all the steps that it takes to get it to the grocery store shelf. Even as the store shelves are replenished, the question will remain. Is this baking bonanza simply a quarantine hobby or a resurgence of a lost art that will stay with us long after this COVID-19 crisis has passed? That's pretty interesting. That was Nick Boer reporting. Red Star began a distillery in the 1880s. The corporate headquarters and test kitchens remain in Milwaukee, but yeast production moved out of the state in 2005. All right, so Facebook isn't letting social distancing stop graduation with a special event planned on Facebook and on Instagram. So May 15th, 2 o'clock Eastern, mark this down. Facebook is going to broadcast hashtag graduation 2020, acknowledging high schools and colleges by name, state by state, and that includes videos and photos from college deans and high school principals. You know, you get the graduation speaker. They've got that as well. Oprah Winfrey is going to be given the commencement address. Several other stars like Jennifer Garner, Simone Biles, Miley Cyrus, they're taking part as well. And the video is going to be shared on Facebook and then highlights will be posted on Instagram and on contributors social media accounts. So our uh, Navy and Air Force pilots paying tribute today to the essential workers right on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic. Look at this right here. That is quite the tribute. The Navy's Blue Angels and Air Force's Thunderbirds flew high over New York City. You can hear the cheers of folks uh, watching from the ground. This was just the first of several formation flights set for today, flying to recognize healthcare workers, first responders, members of the military, and all those other essential workers. Nice break for these guys as well to come out and to see folks uh, honoring them. Flyovers are scheduled for uh, Trenton and Newark, uh, New Jersey, and also Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Exclusive live radar, your three minute advantage. So you'll know first, this is WVTM 13 Live Doppler. What amazing skill those pilots have. All right, an active day coming up tomorrow. We're calling it an impact day, and here is why. Between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., we're going to have some showers and thunderstorms. We think the highest threat of severe comes in the afternoon. The morning stuff, probably for the most part, below severe levels. Wind gusts, even when it's not storming, 30 miles per hour at times. And the biggest hazard with this will be damaging winds as some of these storms move through. Our local office, the National Weather Service in Calera, the folks do a great job all the time with severe weather, are predicting a marginal risk for severe weather pretty much area-wide tomorrow. And I think that makes sense. That's a one on a scale of one to five. Something we have to be concerned about 
but not something that warrants necessarily a major outbreak forecast or anything like that. On the WVTM 13 Live Doppler, pretty much rain free at this point. Maybe that's a sprinkle trying to develop in Winston County, but not much. We have two areas of thunderstorms. One back here in Louisiana is diving southeastward, so that will not be a factor. Another one's developing up here, though, in parts of southeastern Kansas. That will be a factor. That'll be the storms that get here tomorrow morning, but they have to travel a long distance. And by then, they'll probably have weakened at least quite a bit. 73 degrees at 7 o'clock, 67 at 10. No weather worries this evening. It's going to be fine. Overnight tonight, some showers will move in, but probably not until about 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning when there may be some elevated thunderstorms as well. We'll take you through this now with our model forecast. You're going to see the short term, which is not so good, and you're going to see the longer term, which is much better. As we go through tonight and overnight tonight, as you can see, a lot of clouds in place, maybe a few showers in Cherokee County at 2 a.m., but not a whole lot. Then later on by 8 a.m., this model really weakens things very quickly, maybe weakening it a little bit too fast, but the point is some showers and storms move in, then tend to diminish during the morning hours. But in the afternoon, there's a rejuvenation of this, and we think the highest chance of severe will be over our east central counties, maybe from southeastern Jefferson on through Talladega, Clay, Coosa, Shelby County, St. Clair, Calhoun, probably the area with the highest chance of getting some of those damaging winds. Chance of a tornado is not zero, but it's pretty small. We don't look for a widespread outbreak like that whatsoever. And then beyond that, the weather changes a lot. 90% rain chance tomorrow, then none Thursday through Saturday, because once this moves away, the weather gets really nice. Maybe a sprinkle in the northeast tomorrow, but otherwise good stuff through the weekend. Seven day forecast impact weather tomorrow, rain and thunderstorm, 74 degrees, your high temperature, breezy and cooler on Thursday, then Friday, Saturday and Sunday. What a spell. We haven't had one of these in quite some time. 83 Saturday, 86 on Sunday. Maybe some showers and storms by next Tuesday. Ian and Brittany. We're going to summer. We fast forwarding real a fast. Bit. We'll really it. fast. All right, so, so this is a case of do not blame the feline. How it looks like a Zoom meeting and a commissioner's cat led to one guy's resignation. Plus, can you call this operator error? What it looks like the latest autopilot upgrade causes some Teslas to do at green lights. You're watching WVTM 13 News 4. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us here on this Tuesday. We're looking pretty good out there. We do have an accident not on the main interstates and not causing any congestion um, just west of Birmingham, but we do not see any major congestion on our main arteries here or accidents to report at this time. We will keep you updated though here throughout our newscast, of course, and also on our WVTM 13 app.
A California City Planning Commissioner resigned after tossing his cat while he was on a Zoom video meeting. This was obviously all caught on camera here, and this wasn't all. Just minutes after tossing the animal, that is horrible. The man uh, put down his phone and was seen opening and drinking from a glass bottle. So after the meeting ended, um, the feed was still up and running too. He muttered some offensive words. The city spokesperson says that, you know, she just hopes the man's okay. We've all been sheltering in place for a while. Now. It's hard to tell what is going on with people, you know, emotionally and mentally when you're trapped in your house for so long in the social distancing. The mayor and a council member immediately called for the commissioner's removal. He also apologized. They're already searching for his replacement. The city also says that the sheriff's department is looking into the cat's welfare. So police in northern India came up with a unique way to catch people violating coronavirus lockdowns. They're using this right here, a modified pincher attached to a pole to maintain social distance and to avoid physical touch. Officers came up with the uh, five foot long device after they noted several offenders getting close to police, potentially spreading the virus. So India is under lockdown until Sunday, but they say many people are violating the rules and they're not taking the precautions. All right, so it looks like the latest Tesla self driving software doesn't know what a green light means. Last week, some drivers said that autopilot is slowing down at those green lights and Tesla says it doesn't always stop when it should. That's a problem. The company says it's not quite finished with the software. It's still kind of in the testing mode, and some industry experts say uh, putting out technology before it's ready is a safety issue. Tesla says no matter how advanced the software, you always need to keep an eye on the road. I would say that's good advice. Yeah, always pay attention. I think I would trust a machine more than a, a human actually grabbing yeah. onto the wheel no matter what. That's kind of crazy. you got to get that reverse, though. Green means go. You don't want, don't want to slow down to those green lights. <laughs> Red means stop. Green means go. I'll have to work on that. Day six here. New questions surrounding if the Olympics are really going to happen next year. Plus, sports teams to the rescue house. Some gears getting transformed into protection during the outbreak. You're watching WVTM 13 News. We'll be back after a short break.
You're watching WVTM 13 News. There has been a steady increase in cases of COVID-19 as the state of Alabama now prepares for a limited reopening. Statewide, we've now recorded 6,687 cases, an increase of about 200 from yesterday. This includes 242 deaths from the illness. Of these confirmed cases, Mobile County has the most at 992. Jefferson, not far behind with 852. Lee County now has 373. And Shelby County with 320. We'll have more on the coronavirus coming up for you in just a moment, but first we want to take a live look outside at Gadsden right now. Really a quite beautiful day, 78 degrees out there, but all this is going to change in a pretty big way. All right, so let's get you over to Chief Meteorologist Jerry Tracy right now. So we're talking possibility of some serious storms over the next 24 hours. We are certainly we're going to have rain and some thunderstorms tomorrow, and especially during the afternoon. There could be a few severe storms. Most of what falls in the morning should be rain with a little bit of thunder and lightning. Afternoon more likely to contain some actual thunderstorms. It could be locally strong to severe main hazard with this damaging winds. Even when it's not stormy, it'll be kind of a breezy day with wind gusts as high as 30 miles per hour. Local National Weather Service office has the entire area pretty much under a marginal risk of severe. That's a one on a scale of one to five. Right now the weather's still nice, but it is changing. Clouds are increasing as you can see to the west as we look to the west from Vance and Tuscaloosa County on the WVTM 13 live Doppler still dry. Storms down here in Louisiana not going to be a problem for us, but these will eventually arrive tomorrow morning in weakened fashion, but they'll give us some rain and a few thunderstorms. More about this severe threat, more about some big changes starting on Thursday coming up in a few minutes. Brittany. Jerry, thanks so much. Fresh uh, questions today about whether President Trump's new bar for coronavirus testing is high enough to support states reopening. As the president touts the Paycheck Protection Program, Alice Barr reports small businesses are still getting shut out while they fight to survive. A sobering milestone today is confirmed U.S. coronavirus cases passed the 1 million mark. And as states begin reopening, many without following White House guidelines, an influential model is increasing its projected death toll, saying 74,000 Americans may die by August. With broad agreement, more testing is crucial. The Trump administration rolling out a blueprint that calls for governors to bump screenings up to at least 2% of each state's population every month. The testing is going very well, but this is a good example of a partnership between the federal government and a state government. President Trump meeting today with the governor of Florida, who's raising concerns about international travelers before announcing plans tomorrow to reopen his state. The president considering mandating testing for passengers on international flights. We're working with the airlines on that. Testing, testing on the plane, getting on the plane. The Senate's top Democrat pressing President Trump to use his authority to make sure there are enough materials for all this testing. Why don't we need a national regime to make sure that the manufacturing and supply chains work? The states can't do it. Another key to getting the economy back on track, saving small businesses. President Trump touting the Paycheck Protection Program, though major problems persist. The website crashing as frustrated small business owners rush to apply as soon as applications reopened. And for first responders still working on the front lines. You have a sense of passion that this is what you're meant to do. The elite Blue Angels and Thunderbirds delivering a military salute today with a flyover in New York, New Jersey and Philadelphia. House members have reversed course and decided not to come back to Washington next week because of rising cases of coronavirus in this area. Lawmakers are hoping to return soon to begin working on the next round of emergency aid. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Well, the head of Japan's medical association says it's going to be difficult to hold the Summer Olympics in Tokyo without vaccines for the coronavirus. He added the games are possible only if the infections are under control, not just in Japan, but globally. Experts have said it could take a couple of years or longer to develop vaccines that are safe and effective for clinical use. Japan and the International Olympic Committee agreed to postpone the Tokyo Games until July of next year. So sports teams are donating tons of t-shirts to make face masks for folks in Northern California. Timbuktu, which is known for messenger bags and backpacks, is taking on the task of sewing masks for community organizations in San Francisco. The company had almost everything it needed except for the jersey face covering material. So teams stepped in and they donated enough shirts to make 50,000 masks. Shirts from the Sacramento Kings, from the Warriors, from the Giants, A's, uh, the Sharks, and the 49ers. 
it fuels me, you know, I think that's what, you know, just being able to, to help and feel like I'm contributing to something good. And keep in mind, the people behind the masks you're seeing are the top brass. The company sent workers home amid the COVID-19 quarantine orders. So an ICU nurse uh, receiving a hero's homecoming. Check this out. Taylor Campbell is home from Rhode Island, is from Rhode Island, but just finished spending three weeks volunteering at a New York City hospital. Well, Campbell worked exhausting shifts, sometimes had to wear the same mask five days in a row. What? And now she is back home and she was welcomed with signs and cheers. You can see she's overwhelmed by what she's seeing. <laughs> Family and friends lining the streets. You hear the shouting, just giving her a hero's welcome. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Great story. Let's take a look at traffic conditions out there uh, for this afternoon. We're looking the same, mostly green in our main areas uh, near downtown Birmingham and beyond. One accident not causing any congestion at this point. We'll keep you updated with any changes throughout the afternoon. More updates on our WVTM 13 app as well. We're going the distance in Athletes Weekend Challenge. This is all planned to help people recover from a tornado. Also, if you're working from home these days, how about this? The do's and don'ts of your new office site. And a live look outside the ramp to 5920 on Red Mountain Expressway. Traffic is flowing. Not too many people out on the roads. That's some great news and a, a beautiful day, really. 80 degrees, sunshine, blue skies, but some big changes on the way. Jerry Tracy is here to keep you updated all evening long. You're watching WVTM 13. So after more than a month of online school, the Kansas City School District says snow days may now be a thing of the past. The epidemic has forced the district to go to virtual learning. So next winter, if students and teachers can't go to school, district leaders say teachers could just do class online. The district does say online instructions are often not as effective as traditional classrooms. Many students don't have access to the internet or computers as well, and some just don't log in. If you're a skier or a snowboarder and you had a season pass to Vail, Got some good news. The company says anyone with passes for last season will get between 20 and 80% credit back for next year. 
That's because the mountains closed early because of COVID-19. Vail Resorts owns 37 ski resorts in the U.S., Canada, and Australia. A South Carolina man is taking on a big challenge. This is all to raise money for those impacted by a weekend tornado. Danny Marcus will walk 100 miles on a one mile loop this weekend in just over 33 hours. So what he's doing here is asking for pledges. 100% of the money will go to people who are rebuilding after the storm that came through. People will pledge to a certain amount per mile and all the money is gonna to go to funds that are already set up by either the city of Seneca or uh, Oconee United Way. What a great thing to do. Marcus will do that one mile loop a hundred times. Yeah, and he's already started with that fundraising, already raised about $3,500 so far. It's a great way to help out. All right, so Jerry, we got some changes to talk about over the next day or so. Yeah, we do. We sure do. Tomorrow's going to be a much different kind of day. Showers and a few thunderstorms tomorrow for sure, starting off early in the morning and then off and on during the day. You can see the weather beginning to change now with the clouds increasing as we look to the west from Tuscaloosa County. On the WVTM 13 Live Doppler, certainly right here we're still dry. Weather's not going to be an issue this evening. It's going to be okay outside despite the increase in cloud cover. One batch of thunderstorms staying well to our south and west. The other batch here is the beginning of what we'll get here tomorrow during the course of the morning hours. For tonight then, the evening just fine, 67 by 10. Overnight, some showers and a few thunderstorms move in. 4 to 7 a.m., certainly a good possibility over at least the northwestern half of the area. We'll go through this now as we take you through overnight tonight and tomorrow. Maybe a few showers tonight. During the day tomorrow, the showers and storms move in. This model really weakens them very quickly. It may be overdoing the weakening, but either way, I think some thunderstorms come through in the afternoon at 6 p.m., and a few of these in the afternoon may be severe with damaging winds. We'll talk much more about this coming up in a few minutes. Ian and Brittany. All right, so opening up the lines of communication. What a team has come up with to help the hearing impaired stay safe and still be able to communicate. Also celebrating mom while still social distancing. Some last minute ideas to show your love while respecting those stay at home orders. You're watching WVTM 13 News at 4.
In Maryland, 25 police officers will be on paid leave for the rest of the pandemic, not because they caught COVID-19, but because of their facial hair. The county health officer says that beards aren't compatible with protective face masks, and the CDC even posted a chart making the point that beards work against masks effectiveness. So that's where the problem starts. There are more than 20 officers who claimed a medical exemption because of a condition preventing them from shaving. And unfortunately, their skin treats the tip of the hair like a splinter. So it's an inflammatory reaction, but worse off, the patients really feel like they have several splinters in their face. So after hearing the concerns, the chief agreed the officers who could not shave would go on paid health and safety leave. With the cost of protective masks rising due to COVID-19, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office came up with a plan to cut costs. They're recycling hundreds of N95 masks using a high-tech disinfecting process. This unit uh, from Duke University vaporizes hydrogen peroxide, which is then blown into the air. The sheriff says N95s, once sold for $3.75, are now $12 a piece. It's just going to have to be force of habit. The more you cover up, the quicker we can lower the curve and eliminate the possibility of exposure. So recycling these masks will save county sheriffs, fire and public health a great deal of money. So the pandemic has hit the airline industry especially hard and Southwest Airlines reported its first quarterly loss in years. The company expects it to be just as bad when the current quarter results are released as well. Southwest sold only 6%, 6% of its seats to passengers back in April. The airline accepted help from the U.S. Treasury Department to stay afloat with more than a $2 billion grant. Airlines also stepping up their policies to contain the spread of coronavirus. Starting May 4th, JetBlue will require passengers to wear a face covering throughout their travels. So from the time you check in to board and leaving on the plane. JetBlue recently started requiring crew members to wear a mask or a face covering while on duty. American Airlines will start handing out face masks and wipes to passengers as well. Bed Bath & Beyond is extending most closures nationwide until at least May 16th, despite some states reopening. This is working to expand the availability of buy online pickup um, um, in stores or contactless curbside pickup. Bed Bath & Beyond will also extend the furlough of the majority of store associates and a portion of corporate associates. It's continuing to pay 100% of those employees health insurance. So Comcast, AT&T, T-Mobile and Verizon all extending their pledge to keep people online during the virus pandemic. The companies say that they're going to continue no disconnect policies through the end of June. Comcast says it extended the policy to help students finish out the school year while staying at home can't pay your bill, you have to notify the provider to avoid late fees or a potential loss in service. And as we scramble to find out our new normal life while staying at home, we're also trying to figure out our new routines both personally and professionally. Wendy Wolfolk has a list of do's and don'ts for our new workspaces, as well as our health and beauty regimens. Working from home, the new normal, it's important to make your workspace just right. Definitely start by shopping your home. See what you already have on hand. Maybe the end table or accent table can be a desk. It can be so tempting to work from the couch or the bed. It's not great for your back or your neck. Our new norm should also include more balanced nutrition. And there's a lot we're all dealing with here. Um, don't make um, to don't make the need that you need to lose weight another thing that you need to worry about. A combination of protein, fiber, and fat will help you feel satisfied and give you energy throughout the day. And going to the freezer may be even more nutritious than fresh. When it's frozen, it's frozen at the peak of ripeness. When it comes to our beauty routine, do it yourself isn't always a good idea. We don't know when we can set up the next appointment. And so people are scrambling. Coloring your own hair and doing your nails should be relatively harmless. And both will grow back if something goes wrong but not with things like chemical peels. They're going online, they're finding these pure acids, learning how to mix them up, playing scientists in the bathroom, and it's dangerous and toxic to your body. The biggest no-no on the list? Online fillers. Who in the world would want to inject their own face? Some things should still be left to the professionals. Wendy Wolfolk, NBC News. 
A California teenager came up with a unique solution to help the hearing impaired communicate during the pandemic. Face masks with a clear vinyl center to allow deaf people to continue to be able to lip read. The creator has a family friend who is deaf and says that she came up with the idea after watching her friend really struggle to communicate. For the span of this quarantine, I noticed that there have been a lot of posts about how hard it is for them to communicate. And during this time, I had already been sewing um, regular masks. So I started researching on how I could accommodate them to everybody. What a great idea here. Anyone can order one of her masks for a donation and all of the money goes to the Hearing and uh, Impaired Project, which provides free hearing aids to those who can't afford them. All right, so less than two weeks now until Mother's Day. Mark that one down. Social distancing rules, shipping delays, they could impact the way you celebrate this year, uh, but you can still make sure the mom has a great gift with no contact. So there's a culinary experience that can be delivered right to mom's doorstep. Shipping some regional favorites, so you got deep dish pizza from Chicago, bagels from New York, maybe some barbecue from right here in Birmingham. Subscription boxes, there are also an option, so you got wine and beauty boxes, and of course flowers. You can't go wrong with flowers on Mother's Day. You got potted plants that can be delivered as well. Just the big piece of advice here from the experts, do this as soon as possible because retailers are reporting shipping delays because of COVID-19. You probably need a week of in business days to place the order to ensure that it will get to her on time. All right, so start planning now. Get it done this week. That way it has next week to get there. Uh, Mother's Day is May the 10th, which is a week from this coming Sunday. Handwritten notes, not a bad idea either. Just carving out some time, maybe do a video call, a conference call with, with all your loved ones to wish mom a happy Mother's Day. Sounds like a great idea. If you're looking for fun online, the popular Google Doodle games are back. Uh, perfect distraction uh, during the <laughs> pandemic. Great way to fill some time. So over the years, Google's featured an impressive number of games, some mini games as well on its homepage. So here's what you got for the next few weeks. 10 new doodles. That'll keep you busy for a while, right? Each one's a call back to one of the company's popular games, and there's going to be something for everyone from kids to multiplayer games as well. WVTM 13 <laughs> Live Doppler, your three minute advantage. Uh, but check that out. Main hazard with these storms coming through tomorrow will be damaging winds, and we think the highest chance of that's during the afternoon. Most of what we get during the morning hours should be basically rain with a few thunderstorms. Wind gusts, even when it's not raining, could reach 30 miles per hour. So obviously we're calling this an impact day. No impacts right now on the WVTM 13 Live Doppler. We are dry across the area. Upstream from us, a different story. Active thunderstorms in Louisiana, but they're really diving southeastward. So they're not going to be a factor for us, but we also have storms back here in Kansas and Missouri. Several severe thunderstorm warnings with these. They're moving southeastward. They're the ones that will get here in the morning tomorrow, though they should be weaker by the time they arrive in Alabama. Then they'll refire later in the afternoon. 73 at 7 o'clock, 67 at 10. The bottom line for this evening is no weather issues should be just fine. Overnight tonight, the showers and a few storms will move in as temperatures get down into the low and mid 60s. So let's take a look at this now. We start off at 4 o'clock today. And we have clouds overspreading the area, but nothing bad as we go through the overnight period. Still pretty dry at 3 o'clock in the morning. Then showers and storms become a bit more numerous. This model really weakens them, maybe overdoing the weakening, but I do think they'll be losing their strength by the time they get to us. Different story in the afternoon tomorrow. Here's why. This 6 o'clock, showers and thunderstorms here moving pretty steadily southeastward. Some of these storms will be heavy, and a few of them may contain damaging winds. We can't completely roll out a tornado, but we think the main impact will be from damaging straight line winds. Rain chance tomorrow, just about a sure bet, 90%. No chance Thursday through Saturday. Very nice period coming up here, and only 10% by the time we get to Sunday. Take a look at this. We'll start off at 3 o'clock Friday morning. Conditions really nice here. 4 o'clock in the afternoon Friday, no problems at all. Then it stays mostly clear as we go through uh, Friday night and Saturday, and Saturday night and Sunday too. Late Sunday night, this front comes down from Tennessee, but it's going to stall out at some point, so even that may not bring us rain. And even if it does, that will be essentially after the weekend is over. So once we get through tomorrow, and it's going to be kind of a challenging day, looks like several days of really nice weather. Seven-day forecast tomorrow, impact weather, showers and storms, 74-year high temperature, breezy and cooler on Thursday with a high of 70, some clearing, then really nice Friday and over the weekend. And look at the warming trend up to 86 Sunday afternoon. Stays warm early next week. Maybe some storms come back by next Tuesday. Brittany. Jerry, thanks. Let's take a look at traffic conditions this evening. We are looking pretty good on our main interstates, especially near the Birmingham metro area and beyond. All green, uh, one accident that isn't causing any congestion at this time. More updates throughout the evening on our WVTM 13 app in the traffic section as well. More news coming up after a short break. We hope that you stick with us. You're watching WVTM 13 News.
Happening right now in Texas, authorities searching for a missing Fort Hood soldier. Now a $15,000 reward is being offered for any information. The story is getting a lot of attention right now, both on our app and on our Facebook page. Fort Hood leaders say that Vanessa Gillian has not been seen since last Wednesday in the parking lot of her barracks. Her keys, her ID, her wallet, they were found where she had been working earlier in the day. The fort says an extensive search is underway. No further information is being released. Now to a story that has the web on fire. Firefighters give a special birthday surprise to a girl who's made thousands of masks during the coronavirus pandemic. When Lainey dropped off these masks to Oklahoma City firefighters, she wasn't expecting anything in return. But what they, when they caught her uh, wind that it was her birthday less than a day away, she wanted, they wanted to make it special for her. So they gave her cards and once the pandemic is over, they say they'll give her a personal tour of the fire station. First of all, you guys are the heroes, not me. I'm very thankful for firefighters who saved millions of lives. I want to thank um, all the firefighters or the firefighter who came here that came for his personal time to see me and wish me happy birthday. These birthday cards were all signed. You rock. Thanks for being our hero. Uh, social media having a field day with this one right here. So the Pentagon's released uh, three short videos showing uh, unidentified aerial phenomena, also known as a UFO. So look at this video appears to show an unidentified flying object moving across uh, while being recorded by infrared cameras. Two of the videos show service members reacting to the objects pretty much in awe. Uh, Pentagon leaders say they released the video to clear up any misconceptions by the public on its, uh, uh, on its authenticity. For more information on this story and others, check out the WVTM 13 Facebook page and app. It is free for Apple and Android users. This is WVTM 13. Breaking news is happening right now. Not well in a perfect world that we want to be. However, the people of Alabama are doing the hard things to ensure that we can get back to our routines just as soon as possible. Breaking right now, safer at home. Alabama stay at home order set to expire this week. What the state says the next phase will look like. It's part of our continuing coverage, uh, coronavirus pandemic coverage. Let's get straight into some of the biggest headlines today. Alabama's Department of Public Health now reporting 6,687 confirmed cases. Uh, that's an increase of 188 cases in the past 24 hours. According to the state's health officer, that's on par with what he's seen in the past few days. Sadly, we've seen an increase in the death toll. Alabama is now reporting 242 people have died in our state from COVID-19. Another headline today coming out of Alabama's largest city. Leaders approved an ordinance requiring people to wear masks or face coverings when out in public. It goes into effect this Friday and applies to anyone two years or older. We'll have more on the new requirement coming up shortly. And just coming into the newsroom, Tuscaloosa's mayor releases his plan for reopening businesses. According to Walt Maddox's plan, it will happen in phases starting Thursday evening. Phase one will continue through May 15th, with the start of phase two to be based on COVID-19 data and state orders. Each phase allows for the opening of some new businesses, but all at 50% capacity. And right now we want to shift our focus to the weather. It's a beautiful spring day outside for many, but storms are brewing. The WVTM 13 Chief Meteorologist Jerry Tracy joins us now. This latest system heading towards us may bring rain as early as tonight, Jerry? It looks like it could begin, guys, sometime after about 2 or 3 in the morning, at least for our northwestern counties anyway. Overall, your weather headlines impact weather tomorrow. Isolated severe possible. Going to get hotter this weekend with temperatures eventually approaching 90. Now, we right now are under a marginal risk of severe. This is the official forecast from the local National Weather Service office. A marginal is a one on a scale of one to five, covering pretty much all of central Alabama during the day tomorrow, but I think especially for the afternoon and early evening hours. Right now in the WVTM 13 live Doppler, no sign of any rain here. Different story upstream. Storms in Louisiana, but they'll stay south of us. Storms in Missouri, they're the ones that will bring us the rain late tonight. They will be weaker by the time they get here. So overall, your evening still looks good. Overnight, though, rain and a few thunderstorm move in. Temperatures in the mid-60s. The worst of this probably comes tomorrow afternoon when the line reorganizes, and that will mean some showers and thunderstorms. And a few of these may be severe as we get into the afternoon hours tomorrow. Here comes that line now. Much more on this threat coming up in just a few minutes. Over to Guy and Sherry. 
More than six weeks after declaring a state public health emergency, Alabama is taking its first steps to restart the economy. But this is not an immediate reopening for all businesses. Speaking from Montgomery earlier today, Governor Ivey announced the safer at home order. It goes into effect Thursday at 5 p.m. Here's what's changing from the stay at home order. First, certain businesses will be allowed to reopen based on sanitation and social distancing guidelines. This does not include barber shops, hair salons, gyms or movie theaters. Retail stores can reopen with 50% occupancy. Alabama's beaches will reopen but cannot include 10 or more people in a group and those must be six feet away from the others. Medical procedures will be allowed once again unless prohibited by the state health officer in order to continue fighting COVID-19. And while maintaining focus on our personal health, it's now time that we also focus on our economic health. And this too will be a thoughtful, methodical process. Again, the order goes into effect Thursday at 5 in the evening. It'll remain in effect through May 15th. Under the governor's new plan, hundreds of businesses must wait to reopen their doors, while others will continue modified operations. WVTM 13's John Papke explains what the order means for restaurants and churches and why one top state leader was hoping for more. For many closed businesses waiting on Governor Ivey's green light to reopen, their patience will be tested a little longer. Reopening Alabama's economy is certainly not as simple as flipping a switch or snapping your fingers. Today, Ivy announced her safer at home order. Restaurants can still offer curbside meals, but dining rooms remain off limits. So do gyms, theaters and salons. The state's health officer says we have not satisfied all three of the White House's criteria for flattening the COVID-19 curve. We have yet to uh, meet the 14 day sustained decline uh, that is recommended in those guidelines. And I would say for that reason, uh, we are not uh, proceeding to the full phase one opening. A task force chaired by Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth had recommended more widespread business openings. And while he praised the governor's choice to allow all retail shops to open, he strongly believes houses of worship should be allowed to do the same. I do think there's a way for young people such as myself and my family to go sit together and be six feet away from you know other people. But the governor's personal pastor says Alabama does not meet the CDC's guidelines for large church gatherings and opening too soon could lead to virus surges seen elsewhere. Where COVID-19 has spread through a congregation and even taken the lives of pastors and created community outbreaks. A consequence the governor hopes to avoid with a little more patience. In Montgomery, John Papke, WVTM 13. Under the safer at home order, all schools must also remain closed. Daycares can operate as long as there are no more than a dozen children in a room at a time. And as we mentioned, hair salons and barber shops won't be allowed to reopen under the governor's new order. WVTM 13 Xavier Harris spoke to a few owners for their reaction to the decision. Business has been non-existent. Um, zero dollars coming in an exponential amount of dollars going out. The owner of Randall's Groom Lounge says the news of Governor Kay Ivey's safer at home order was great until she said barber, hair, and nail salons aren't among businesses that can reopen in a few days. We all excited about getting back in here, uh, practicing our craft, doing what we love to do. But he says he understands why that can't happen just yet. Public safety first. My safety is more important. Uh, the safety of my, my coworkers and colleagues are more important. However, the owner of the Mailroom Four Service Barbershop says he plans to open his doors Friday regardless of what the governor says. When you can walk into a Walmart with dozens and dozens of people or a Home Depot or Lowe's um, and other businesses like that, you know, there's there's no rhyme or reason to, you know, the stay at home order and it hasn't been challenged. A challenge Governor Ivey is willing to accept. These are orders and if they're violations, they are subject to a $500 fine, etc. So I would encourage them to rethink that strategy. Ivey says the safer at home order is the first phase of what she hopes and expects to be a multi-stage reopening of the state of Alabama. In Birmingham, Xavier Harris, WVTM 13.